All right. So number four, we have a triangle PQR, and we want to find what the measure of angle P is. So I'm just going to draw this triangle out here. And I'm going to have P, Q, and R. So we have some sort of um, we have some sort of side values here. So the hypotenuse is 57.6. This leg right here is 33.8. Um, we don't know what this leg PQ is, but we can find it if we wanted to using uh, the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, this question says find angle P. So this right here is angle P, lowercase p, because it is um, the angle of big P right here. So the definition of sine theta is the value of opposite side from theta over the hypotenuse. And to elaborate on that, um, let's assume we have this right triangle, and this is only for the case of a right triangle, and our angle theta is right here. So the side opposite from theta would be this one. So this is the opposite side. Um, the side adjacent to theta that is not the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is the longest leg of the right triangle right here. Um, uh, the longest side, rather. And it's made up of two legs right here is what I meant to say. So the hypotenuse is this long side. And it's made up of these two legs, which can either be an opposite side or an adjacent side. So if we're dealing with cosine or if we're dealing with tangent, we have to consider the opposite side and the adjacent side. But because we are um, dealing with sine, we only have to deal with the opposite side. So uh, because of that, we want to go back to our actual example here, and we want to see what the opposite side of angle P is. So if we do the sine of angle P right here, and uh, we look at what side is opposite of angle P, that would be this side, RQ, just like in this little triangle. And we would see that that value is 33.8. And our hypotenuse is 57.6 up here. And it is this side right here, this longest side that's made up of the two legs holding it. And um, this would be our denominator. So if we were to evaluate this just by dividing the two values, um, uh, we would get some sort of decimal. But in order to get angle P by itself, we have to take the sine inverse on both sides. So to get rid of the sine that's attached to this angle P, we have to take the sine inverse, canceling out the sine, um, and then do the same thing on the other side. So what we're going to get is angle P is equal to the sine inverse of 33.8 over 57.6. And then if we were to evaluate this, um, yeah, so if, if we were to evaluate this, um, we would get, if I were to just use my, I'm just going to Google this quick. Google is my calculator here. Or maybe I should use an actual calculator. That would probably be better. Um, so... I don't actually have a calculator on me right now. Oh, here, sine, sine inverse calculator, perfect. So 33.8 divided by 57.6. I'm just going to take this decimal equivalent. Okay, so this decimal equivalent right here, it was um, angle P is equal to the sine inverse and it was approximately 0.5868. And if we plug this into any calculator, we get that angle P is approximately equal to 35.93 degrees. And that right there would be our answer.
So um, this answer choice or this answer given here was actually correct, but there is a slight mistake here. So I'm going to say the answer is correct, but um, the fraction inside of the sine inverse is flipped. Um, it should be sine inverse of 33.8 divided by 57.6. Good job, anyway. And that is the end of number three.